What's up guys, Lloyd here, and today I'm coming at you with my first ever tier list. Now, I'm not huge into tier lists because personally, I think everything can work and everything is super situational, but a lot of you has, have asked me my opinions on uh, some of the better specs in the game right now, so I'll try and give it to you straight. So, I'm going to be comparing, I think, mostly from Arena uh, and maybe a rated battleground stance. I'll, I'll talk a bit about if I think uh, a spec maybe isn't so good in arena and it's actually much better in RBGs or random BGs. But this tier list is primarily going to be what I think are, you know, the best of the best PvP classes. So why don't we go in order right now? So the first one we have here is an affliction lock. Now I think affliction lock is probably A tier, uh, maybe maybe even A plus tier right now. Uh, when paired with a shadow priest, a boomy, an Eli shaman, uh, spell cleaves hurt really bad, especially if you're playing as a ret. Um, but the reason I don't think they're S tier is because uh, you know despite them being able to kite insanely well, they do die, which is pretty good. You know most classes can die fairly quickly right now. All right, that's it for the Affliction Lock. Let's go to the Arcane Mage. I'm going to rate Arcane Mage as S tier. I think Arcane Mage's uh, Barrage Execute Legendary is insane right now. I got hit with a 14k in 3v3 Arena non-crit yesterday. And their survivability along with kiting is really strong. They have Polymorph Axis. They have Alter Time, Temporal Shield. They're fairly tanky for a mage. And they're going to have Tri Ward uh, Triple Shield as well coming up this week. So if you're looking to play Arcane in Battlegrounds, Arcane's insane in BGs as well. So that is why I'm going to rate Arcane Mage S tier. Warrior, Arms Warrior, probably one of the most uh, you know controversial I've seen talked about specs right now in terms of uh, its tier placement. But if I could place Arms Warrior, I'm going to place it S tier. Arms is insanely good with every single class right now. You can pair Arms up with any of these specs and it's going to be one of the best partners that that specialization can play with uh the reason being is intervene is so strong right now you intervene your teammate you can take kidneys you can take physical stuns physical cc saps blinds you reduce the damage they take with a conduit and with overwatch you can put a spell reflect on your team so warriors damage i rate it a plus maybe s damage their self sustainability is fairly high too um they have ignore pain d stance Kyrian Files, if you're running Kyrian, uh, and they have access to three fairly good covenants. They have Night Fae with Condemn, uh, I'm sorry, Night Fae with uh, Ancient Aftershock, which is really strong. Condemn is okay, I, I'd rate it in the bottom two, and then uh, you have Spear of Bastion with Kyrian as well, very, very good. So Arms Tier, S, definitely. Now, this is going to be an interesting spec to play, or to place, because Sub Rogue just got nerfed, and I think, that, um, you know, not many people have been playing Assassination, but I actually think Assassination is likely going to come out of the woodwork and be S tier. But just because we haven't seen it too much lately, I'm going to place it on A, A plus tier right here. Because Assassination is pretty much unchanged for most expansions, except recently people have discovered they have a one-shot mechanic with Venom, hitting uh, like 18 to 20k in Venom. So beware guys all those sub rogues are going to be swapping over to assassination more than likely and uh yeah this i may have misplaced this but for now it's going to be a tier now i'm actually not going to place tanks other than prop paladins and uh i know that that might come as a um as a disappointment to some people but you know what i'm gonna i'll, I'll place tanks in the bottom right here and i'll talk about them at the end of the video how about that because I think there's only one true viable tank, and uh, at least in Arena, and that is Prop Paladin. All right, BM Hunter. Uh, BM Hunter, I'm going to place on B tier. It definitely has some comps that you can run. You can run uh, with an Arms Warrior and, and find success, and it has pretty strong sustained damage. The only issue is uh, when people kill your pet. Pets have a uh, long rest time, and they're fairly squishy, so I think BM might struggle a little bit with that. Uh, although, you know... They're, uh, they have a little bit tankier pets than, than other Hunter specializations. So I'm, I'm going to drop it on B tier because I think the other two Hunter specs are a little bit better than BM. Uh, another tank spec, we'll talk about that later. Demonology Warlock. So this is one of the specs that I actually think are probably not good. And there's uh, not many specs that, I, that I'll rate in the uh, lower C tier. 
but uh, Demo Warlocks right now are broken. And I mean, they can do damage and they have, they're they decently tanky, but at the same time, their pets, their pet AI is actually so buggy in Arena, it's so difficult to get your pets to swap targets because uh, the macros that historically work with Hunter and DK pets do not work with Demonology imps, dogs, and uh, their big burst cooldown, their big summon, uh, summon that demonic tyrant thing it, it the swapping macros do not work so they're not exactly uh strong in pvp for that reason if you're going to compare their damage their damage is actually not bad they get the ramp up and you actually get a demonic tyrant off they have strong sustained damage it's, it's not terrible so we have destro locks guys destro locks are getting a 22 percent buff to chaos bolt and i already didn't think they're that bad i'm going to rate them in the a tier um prior to the buffs they're they're probably a tier you know maybe they're like a plus tier now with the 22 percent chaos bolt buff but uh we shall see uh healers disc priest s tier for sure s tier this has to be my favorite healer to play with right now because it has you know it has access to purge it has strong defensive team cooldowns it has uh power and fusion which is amazing with a red paladin and dark archangel and uh just their general healing output is, is definitely s tier right now for sure ellie shaman so both ooh, we have both ellie and enhanced shaman right here i think both enhanced shaman specs are uh, doing pretty solid if you pair ellie with the uh, shadow priest and uh maybe with the moonkin something like that it does really well it's decently tanky and it has strong consistent damage and burst oh my gosh it's burst is insane um so it's uh, it's definitely top tier in battlegrounds as well if you just want to mess around there. Enhanced shaman. Now I personally really want to place this on S tier because I think enhanced shaman's damage and healing are uh, are insane. But I think the one thing that it's going to be dying to is going to be dying in stuns, and you need to rely on your teammates pretty heavily for that. So I'm going to place it on A A plus tier, and I think enhance is definitely going to be strong this season when paired with an arms warrior. But, uh, you know, the season goes on and we shall see. My, my Shaman finally hit 60. We're going to get more gameplay out there. All right. Feral Druid. Another A tier spec, guys. Feral Druid Burst is absolutely insane. Uh, the reason I don't place it on S tier, though, is because it's uh, probably a little bit comp dependent right now. And it also is a tiny bit squishy. So you have to be good at Feral in order to survive. All right. Now we have the other mage specs. We have fire and frost guys i'm gonna rate fire s tier right here uh fire has access to absolutely insane one-shot burst with combustion radiant spark meteor um it's gonna have multiple good compositions in threes with sub rogue assassination rogue arms warrior uh even a feral druid would be pretty good with a fire mage right now uh, it's very setup based and it has strong survivability as well um in duels 1v1, fire might not be as good as arcane, but it's definitely worth putting on S tier. Now we have frost mage. I think frost is really strong as well this season, but I think it's comp limited. I think the best comp you're going to be able to play with frost mage is uh, probably with a shadow priest, something like that. I don't think it's going to be as good as its uh, arcane and fire partners in RMP, but you know, who knows? You could probably make it work. Uh, and Frost has insane cleave damage right now. In BGs, you guys can light people up. And um, it has a rapid fire Frost Bolt uh, legendary, which is pretty fun to uh, see it work out. So, guys, if you like Frost, all three mage specs are good. You know, I'm, I'm going to put Frost as A plus tier, I think. Now we have Frost DK. I'm going to rate Frost DK as an A tier spec. Now, the reason being is Windwalker DK and Arms DK are absolutely insanely good right now. Uh, Frost is coming out of the woodwork. I didn't think it was going to be as good as it is turning out to be in this season. But uh, Frost DKs are pumping the damage right now. And their survivability is okay, uh, which is why they're not S tier right now. But they have extra team utility with their um, Frostworm Legendary Stun. They have Blinding Sheets. They have Chill Streak. They have access to insane single target damage. Uh, I think they are probably going to be really good this season. There's already a few uh, rank 1 Frost DKs. And uh, in BGs, you can light it up. Frost DKs are amazing. Oof, oof. So we have another slightly uh, sad spec right now. Now, Fury... Fury you can do okay single target damage with, um, it's survivability is actually alright, it's okay, but um, just compared to arms, 
And even compared to most other melee, Fury's not that great. It's a little underwhelming. Um, you can play Condemn with Fury and get away with uh, doing insane damage and random BGs and stuff. So guys, if you if you want to be a BG hero, Fury still works for that. Um, but in terms of arena, I, I would recommend playing Arms over Fury for sure. Lack of Immortal Strike, lack of defensive stance, um, lack of PvP talent options. Because you have to run a lot of Fury specific PvP talents, it leaves Fury uh, in the dust. Alright, Havoc Demon Hunter. Now, people thought Havoc Demon Hunters weren't that great, but I'm actually going to rate them B tier. Uh, not only because the hunt from Night Fae Covenant ability is insane, their, um, the Unbound Chaos replacement and the Glaive Tempest is actually doing insane cleave damage right now. So it's really between A and B tier. I'm going to place them on B plus tier right now because um you know obviously they did lose some defensive utility going into shadowlands which i totally agree with i think the passive dodge they got was insane along with the uh, extra defensive cooldowns that they had access to so b tier it is happy demon hunters welcome to the average melee club now we have holy priests i think holy priests depending on comp are uh, either a or b tier right now uh, it's tough to say because Disc is so much better and so much more frequently seen than Holy. If you're going to talk about Battlegrounds, you could easily place uh, Holy in S tier for the uh, insane healing and team utility they provide. But I'm going to go ahead and place Holy in A tier right here, guys. Um, reason being is I think we'll see a lot more Holy a little bit later into the expansion, so I can't just straight up place them in the S tier. All right, we have Holy Paladin in now. Um, I'm hesitant to place Holy between uh, the A tier and the B tier, and the reason being is uh, Holy succeeds in really fast metas because they have tons of cooldowns to help their teammates survive. Um, but I think they're going to be comp dependent, and they're just outshined by Disc Priest and rest of Shamans right now. So I'm going to go ahead and put Holy in A tier. Now, Marksman Hunter nerfed week after week so far. I already didn't think Marksman was insane because the only gimmick they had was uh, the double tap, which if you responded to, to cooldowns uh, like right away, like if you're a warrior, you, you rally that by the sword, or if you're a paladin, you just bubble the opener. Um, they're pretty gimmicky, but they're going to have a few comps they can play. They can play with Rogue MM Hunter. They can play Arms MM, which is not as great. They're going to have Jungle Cleave playing with a Feral Druid. And... Um, you know, we'll see what else they we'll see what else they get. They could Cupid could make a comeback. We'll see. But uh, arms arms red is so good right now. So I don't think I'm gonna be playing with much marksman at the moment. So I'm gonna place them in A tier. Now we have Miss Weaver monks. Uh, I don't think Miss Weaver monks are that good right now. They have very low healing output. Um, their survivability is pretty low as well. So I think this might be my first D tier spec. You have to be, not only do you have to be a really good Miss Weaver, but you also have to play uh, specific comps for Miss Weaver. So um, if you're playing random BGs, of course you can succeed as a Miss Weaver. You just heal up your teammates, pour it away, roll away, you're gonna be fine. But if you're caught in a stun in arena and your teammates aren't peeling for you, you're just gonna, you're gonna get splatted. I'm going to place them in, uh, in C tier, but really C minus tier. Outlaw Rogue. Um, tons of setup, tons of damage. Uh, it's, it's riding under the radar right now, so I'm hesitant to place it in B tier. But guys, I think Outlaw is probably B tier. The one weakness is it does have a lot of setup to get its damage rolling, but it actually has a ton of consistent pressure. Um, and I think guys have sub gets nerfed, we might see a little bit more Outlaw as well. So I'm going to go ahead and place it in B tier. Uh, just because we haven't seen too much of it doesn't mean it's not good. All right, Prop Paladin, an easy S tier. Guys, Prop Damage is uh, pretty good right now in addition to team, cooldown, survivability. Uh, one of the best off healers, if not the best off healer in the game, Prop is disgusting. Uh, but... You know, who knows? It'll get nerfed possibly one day, and uh, we won't see it too much anymore. But uh, at the moment, guys, Pro is S tier in both BGs and Arenas. All right, now we have Pro Warrior. I'm going to place Pro Warrior with the other tanks right here. We'll uh, get to it in a little bit, talk a, talk a little bit about tanks in the meta. And uh, Wrestle Druid, an easy C tier, guys. Wrestle Druid and Miss Weaver probably both need some buffs. Wrestle Druid can play in Caster Cleaves, but it is. Pretty squishy if it gets caught, and I don't think it can heal intense melee cleaves like Disc Priests or Rest of Shamans can right now, so 
Resto, Resto Druid might need a little bit of a buff along with Miss Reaper right there. Now we have the God itself, Resto Shaman, getting nerfed today, in fact, but only a little, little bit. Uh, Resto Shaman's absolutely insane. Healing output, team utility, mana efficient. Uh, yeah, there's not much to say here other than S tier. All right, Shadow Priest, again, another S tier uh, player that I think will determine the meta. You know, it's between Arms Warrior and Shadow Priest for really like the best 3v3 arena classes. And uh, Shadow Priest can also succeed in RBGs, duels. It's just an overall really, really good class right now or spec right now. You can pair it up with almost any other spec just like you can with Arms Warriors and it, it will be really good. Sub Rogue. Okay, guys. Sub Rogue today might vanish off the meta. It got pretty intense nerfs. Uh, I'm going to place it in the... A tier because we are still going to be able to uh, probably get you know gimmicky one shot by them I, I don't I don't want to say that they're gonna you know completely die and go away and no longer be S or A tier they have access to shadowy duel blind bomb dance you know all the good rogue abilities that, uh, that define annoying classes so I think they're probably going to be all right or survival hunter another uh i have to put survival on b tier all right yeah we'll, we'll say b b plus tier survival everything's good about survival right now except for the fact that its pet can die and if its pet dies you don't have access to kill command and then you can't generate focus and you have to focus on reviving your pet but if the pet uh dying problem gets solved i think survival could go all the way to s tier I really do. Its damage is insane. Its uh, utility is insane. Uh, it has so much CC and, and provides so much to a team. But uh, yeah, unfortunately the pet dies. So I have to put it all the way down on the B tier on my list. But if you're doing random BGs, survival can easily top. Unholy DK. I'm going to rate Unholy DK a B tier. A B, B plus tier. Uh, some of you might say you think Unholy is better than Frost. But in terms of, um, in terms of damage... If you're lining everything up with frost properly in a in a three three arena setting, you're going to be doing way more burst in single target than you are with an unholy DK. Um, one of the reasons I'm putting unholy pretty low is because right now they're a tad rune starved. So yes, you can get out insane damage and pet damage, but they're also getting a slight mastery nerf today, and they are, um, you know, they can fall a little bit behind. But yeah, if you guys are on Holy DK, you still have plenty of comps. You know, I, I, I'm hesitant to put this in A tier as well. Like, it's really close between B plus and A tier, you guys. But uh, take it as you will. I think Frost is better than Holy. Uh, what is this spec? Oh my gosh. I like I can't even remember the last time I've seen Vengeance Demon Hunter as like its icon. Yep. Talk about that a little bit later. Windwalker Monk. I think Windwalker is probably S tier right now. Windwalker damage is almost unmatched right now by any other melee. Um, the only issue is it's slightly squishy if you catch him in a stun, but spinning crane kick is out of control. It, like monks are hitting 10, 12 K spinning crane kicks. Uh, it's really funny cause like everyone gets hit by it and they die at the same time. It's nuts. But yeah, wind walker damage crazy. Uh, they're going to have plenty of comps to run. They can run wind walker arms warrior. Uh, they can run wind walker DK, wind walker feral, wind walker red, uh, Windwalker, Shadow Priest, all going to be really solid comps. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes uh, in the future. But right now, S tier for sure. Red Paladin. Now, I know you guys have been waiting all video to hear this. I think Red Paladin is somewhere between A plus and S minus tier right here. Like if if I had to rate S, uh, Red Paladin on this scale right here, it's going to be like the last of the S tiers. And that is because Rhett Arms Disc is so unbelievably good in threes right now. I I cannot stress this enough, guys. If you want to play threes, this is the season. Play Rhett Arms Disc or Rhett Arms Wrestler Shaman, and you will uh, you'll have fun. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure that's because, you know, both Arms and Disc are both S tier, and they provide so much to the Rhett. Rhett by itself is probably A tier. Uh, and my reasoning for this is once you get into a little bit higher MMR, people are going to force your bubble right away. And uh, you're going to have to learn how to survive and learn how to, you know, kite and run away. But uh, guys, I think this might be the first time since Warlords of Draenor 
where Red Pelicans have had an S tier season. I'm going to place them right here on the bottom of the S tier list. And then we have Boomies. Boomkins are insane right now. Incarnation, Convoke the Spirits, or even just Incarnation by itself is enough to uh, one shot someone in the opener. Um, there's plenty. There's actually two teams on NA right now in Glad Range playing Triple Moonkin and Double Moonkin Disc, and it is the funniest thing to see them when they're queuing into uh, other streamers, and they just come out, convoke the spirits, and instantly kill the entire team. So guys, I'm gonna go ahead and place Boomkin on the S tier. All right. So that is about it for all the DPS, and the reason, you know, one reason. One more reason I'm placing Boomy on the S tier is because they can pair well with multiple different specs. They are the top class when it comes to battlegrounds and doing damage. No class can top damage meters easier or more efficiently than a Boomkin with Starfall, Moonfire, Sunfire, Star Surge. It is just crazy. Uh, now I'll talk a little bit about the tanks. Guys, these tank specs down here are uh, pretty underwhelming when it comes to rated arena. Uh, I'd actually maybe I'd rate Guardian on D tier. Guardian actually does kind of, uh, it, it's pretty tanky. It's really tanky, does some funky damage. Uh, but the rest of the specs are probably no bueno. In terms of flag carrying, I think it's probably going to be between Guardian Druid, maybe Prop Paladin, or Guardian Druid, and maybe Vengeance Demon Hunter. Vengeance Demon Hunter is just a little squishy for RBGs right now. But yeah, probably between Guardian and Prop. All right, guys, that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Take what I said with a grain of salt. Uh, you know, you're entitled to your own opinions. But in my opinion, this is likely what the tier list looks right now uh, in terms of arena. And, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of people have similar opinions, uh, maybe differing. A lot of higher gladiators place Boomkin and Rep Paladin in the A tier. But, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you all next video. Peace.